Welcome to the St. Michael Daily Meditations for Lent. My name is Robin Hinkle, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Lent is In the Garden. When Jesus faced his deepest trial, he prayed in the garden. As we struggle with our own trials, Jesus walks with us and calls us to a deeper life of prayer and commitment to God's love. As Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A reading from Exodus, chapter 5, verse 1, through chapter 6, verse 1. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast for me in the desert. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foremen, You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks, as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made in the past you shall impose upon them. You shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men, that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. So the taskmasters and the foremen of the people went out and said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get your straw yourselves wherever you can find it, but your work will not be reduced in the least. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work. Your daily task each day is when there was straw. And the foremen of the people of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and were asked, Why have you not done all your task of making bricks today and yesterday as in the past? Then the foremen of the people of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, Why do you treat your servants like this? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make bricks. And behold, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle, you are idle. That is why you say, Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Go now and work. No straw will be given you, but you must deliver the same number of bricks. The foremen of the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble, when they said, you, sh- you shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, your daily tasks each day. They met Moses and Aaron who were waiting for them as they came out of Pharaoh. And they said to them, The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why have you done this evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to his people, and you have not delivered your people at all. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. Here ends the reading. This story about Moses and Aaron and the Pharaoh of Egypt is particularly appalling to me. This is the first encounter by Moses and Aaron with Pharaoh in their joint calling to him to let the Israelites go to the desert to worship their God. And it gives us an immediate glimpse into the character of the Pharaoh who was in the place at the time. Quite simply, he is a bully. And to make it worse, he is in the ultimate place of power in their world. 
And so standing up to this bully is almost an impossibility. And so the Israelites, who were so glad to see Moses and Aaron and to hear about the call from God, immediately are hit with the harsh reality of their situation. They live under the power of the king who has no respect for them, who enjoys making them look like fools, and then beating them. Pharaoh is a bully in the worst sense. He enjoys pushing them down, not giving them the resources they need to do what he is calling them to do, then calling them stupid and lazy. This call to make bricks without straw is a fool's errand, and Pharaoh knows it. Unfortunately, we have some of these mean bullies in our world today, in our schools, our workplace, in our supposed friend groups. And my first point is, if you are one, Lent is a time for your self-reflection and a call to turn from your ways. And if you are the victim of one, or are aware of someone who is, now is the time to help this neighbor in need. Helping the downtrodden is a call for all Christians everywhere, all day, every day. Which brings me to my next point. Pharaoh was more than just a schoolboy or workplace bully. He had the power to inflict harm or good on an entire nation and the people that were under his rule. Now, we certainly do see world leaders who may fit this bill. But I also want us to consider how we may be part of the problem ourselves. This past summer, I gave a sermon where I mentioned children growing up in poverty. We have them here in Dallas, and I also saw them in Tela, Honduras, from where I just returned on mission trip. And as I was again reading this account of Pharaoh, it occurred to me that we also are guilty of not giving a far too large portion of the children in our midst adequate resources to grow up into stability and independence. The title of this subsection in the story of Exodus is Making Bricks Without Straw. Isn't that what we do when we expect a child born into poverty to somehow work himself or herself out of it? It is an impossible task. We are expecting them to make bricks without straw. We do not give them the ability to make strong bricks of a good education of basic needs including food, clothing, and medical care. We do not give them the bricks of a well-built home and a safe community. We are expecting them to grow up to make a living when they become adults, but we do not provide them with the straw to make the bricks to build a life that will sustain them. And so the cycle of poverty continues over and over and will continue to do so until someone intervenes. We at St. Michael in this season of Lent have the opportunity to engage in deep prayer and self-reflection, individually and as a church community, to consider how we may help to lead an exodus from old systems of education, housing, and basic needs, and to consider new ways, new routes, to places and spaces where we truly help to build up our children, not put them down, to help lead them to their own place of abundance and freedom. Today, I therefore invite you to consider where you and we are being called to come in and intervene, to chart a new path for those who are not given straw for their bricks. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.